Hi, this is Anne with um, a quick anagram on forking projects. Um, I use a, t a term um, from Replit, um, fork, F-O-R-K, um, and it gets used in two different ways to do two different things, and I know that when I run across these things in a new environment and they confuse me because why should one word mean two completely different things, I often get frustrated. So trying to save you frustration here, um, I could wish that we had either used the word copy, which you might make more sense that it means different things in different situations, or that one of these was a fork and one was a spork, but that's not our choice. So um, I just want to go over this super fast. Um, in your week two slides, um, or in any other situation that you might come across, you're likely to see um, me use the word fork. So for example, I talk about forking your bistro REPL. So you've already completed task number one, and you have code, and you want to copy it. Um, or um, there's, I will say that you need to um, take a REPL of mine and use the fork button to create your own copy. So just um, a real quick bit of background. Uh, fork is a formal software development term um, used to make a copy of source code when you expect that source code to diverge from the base source code. Um, and, and you can go to Wikipedia and look up fork, and um, you might have to go through a disambiguation page, but look for the fork that has to do with software development. This looks to, like to be a pretty good um, discussion of that and I hope all of you are in software development long enough to use a source code control system that makes um, the concept of forking uh, clearer. In the meantime, it's really kind of sort of grandiose for um, Replit to use the word fork when really at this point we're just talking about making copies of projects. But, um, but real quickly, if you have a project of your own, so for example, here's my long suffering cats um, little first week replit, and you want to use this as a basis for other work. Now, that could be because you want to play with it and experiment with it after you've got something finished ready for me to grade, or it could be that you want to use this as the basis for another week's worth of work. Um, in either case, when you want to make a copy, what you do is you go here to this little edit button. And if you're copying your own, the fork button is down here. Now you could rename this REPL, but that doesn't make a copy of it. That just changes the name of the current version. If you want to make a copy, you push the fork button. Um, the universe spins for a while. Don't try to hurry it make sure that you let the, the browser settle and that all of this. And then suddenly you have something where all of the code looks the same, but you'll note that this, um, the REPL itself has a new name and they just append a number. So in this, I'm just going to call this copy for demo because I'll probably go delete it. Um, and that is how you fork your own code. And again, every time you change that name, um, the little virtual gerbils have to spin the wheel and it may take a minute for it to come back and be stable and ready for you to start work. So that's forking your own REPL. On the other hand, I will often give you starter code. And this is, this is um, a REPL that's been prepared from my teacher account, so you can see my face there, and um, the student doesn't have, have permission to change it. There are actually two ways to fork this. Um, I think the, the you know, better way is just go ahead and hit the fork button, and then again in my cat's account, now Winston has a project called Course Index. The other way I could have forked it um, that would have worked equally well, but it's, it's kind of it's sort of like waving hands and, and easy to miss, is if you simply start changing code in a REPL that you don't have read-write permission to, you end up making a copy automatically. Um, but I prefer you to use the fork command. And at this point, um, if you're going to change the name, so I will generally be asking you to um, put a date on 
your projects when you make a copy from mine. So you put the day's date and um, approximate hour and 24 hour time that you started this project. Because um, we want to have these to generally have relatively unique file names. So um, that's forking. Hope that helps.